When it comes to the world of NFT art and crypto art, there are a number of things that you need to know about before you start buying or selling any NFT art. And we're gonna discuss everything you need to know right now. If you watch art YouTube videos or read art blogs, you've probably already noticed in the past couple weeks, there's been an explosion in discussion about NFT art and crypto art. So if you're anything like me, you probably already know a thing or two about it, but if you, just in case this is your first time hearing about it, let's start by defining a few basic things before we get into the meat of the discussion. So first off, what is NFT art? NFT stands for non-fungible token. A non-fungible token exists on the blockchain just like any other cryptocurrency does. What a non-fungible token is, it's basically an identifier used to attach to a digital item to make it exist as a single unique object. So that way, only one person can actually own that item. So basically, NFT art is any art that is attached to the blockchain using a non-fungible token. Now, if you're new to the crypto market, you may even be wondering, what the heck is a blockchain? The simplest way to explain what the blockchain is, it's a way of recording transactions and exchanges that require no middleman and that everybody has access to immediately as they happen. It provides a very decentralized way of making valuable exchanges between individuals without the need of a banking system because the entire network of everybody using it basically are the active oversight. If somebody wanted to change something on the blockchain, they ultimately would need to be able to hack every single blockchain that's connected to the network at the same time. And right now, such a thing just isn't really feasible. Now that we know what NFT art is and what the blockchain is, the next thing we need to do is take a look and explore the various different NFT marketplaces that already exist. Once we start diving into the various different NFT marketplaces, it becomes really easy to see the sheer potential and magnitude that this particular technology has to offer. It goes far beyond just using it in crypto art and giving artists a new way to earn an income. In the blog post that I wrote on this topic, which I'll put in the links in the comment below or I'll display something right here that you could type into your address bar to go right to it. Anyway, in that post, I did cover the 10 highest grossing NFT marketplaces of the past week. That's according to nonfungible.com, links in the article. Of course, those 10 marketplaces are by no means the limit. By the current count on nonfungible.com, there is about 129 different marketplaces, and I don't even know if that embodies the entire availability of all of the NFT marketplaces that currently exist. NFT art only accounts for a small fraction of the available NFT marketplaces that are already out there. NFTs make possible some really amazing and interesting things, especially when it comes to art. So as an example, one of the first things to hit the market using NFTs was something called CryptoKitties. That was some of the artwork in the thumbnail of this video. Those are CryptoKitties. One of the really cool things about CryptoKitties is that if you have two different CryptoKitties, you can actually breed them together to create a different CryptoKitty that is totally unique from any other CryptoKitty on the chain. Going beyond artwork for just a moment, there is one top grossing website in the top 10 called Decentraland. What Decentraland is, is basically a virtual game world that's basically decentralized and owned by every single player of the game. It's really quite fascinating, and this is gonna be an area and a way for us to explore new economic models and potentially new governing models in the virtual world that we have no other way to explore. Currently, the way the state of the world is, there's no new lands for us to go to, to set up a new government or to set up a new economic system that's isolated and something that can be experimented with, with the knowledge and technology that we have available to us today. So this is one of the coolest things that, about NFTs that I think is really gonna be groundbreaking for basically everything. I make the bold statement in my article that NFTs are as revolutionary to humanity as agriculture, the printing press, or even the internet was possibly 10 times more than all of those things combined. We are at the very tip of the iceberg of this incredible revolution that we're about to undergo. Personally, this is what I feel makes NFT art so amazing and so important. Now that said, there are a number of issues that we need to discuss in a little bit, so watch until the end so we can go over all the important things you need to know about. The next thing we need to discuss is how exactly to make NFT art. There are four basic steps that you need to be aware of on how to make NFT art. The first step is to get a crypto wallet and load up some money into your crypto wallet. Right now, there are certain associated fees with creating crypto art, but that is a problem that's currently being worked on and has some solutions coming down the pipeline. Before we get into that though, let me finish covering the rest of the steps. So once you have your crypto wallet, that's step one. And once you add some cryptocurrency into your wallet, that's step two. 
Step three is to connect that crypto wallet to whatever NFT marketplace you're looking to host your NFT artwork at. Then after that, the last step is basically to list and publish your NFT art. So that's a really brief overview and synopsis of the process that I got from another video. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that video in the, in the description below. I wanna give credit where credit's due. It's by the guy from Capwing. Anyway, he has a really great tutorial on how to get started doing that. Now that said, I will be covering this myself. I'm deeply interested in figuring out how to create an NFT and attaching it to my physical painting. I haven't sold any of my paintings yet, and I figured this might be a, a great thing to do from the very beginning, so that way I ha always have a good idea of where they go, plus there's the added benefit of earning royalties. So the good news is, when it comes to the gas fees, or the network cost that it costs to actually create an NFT token, is that there are companies that are seeking to find ways around this problem. So far, Mintable is the only NFT marketplace I'm seeing that is offering any kind of option that doesn't require any gas fees. Basically, the way I understand it works is it's somehow being made available to be observed and purchased on the blockchain without an actual NFT being created and put into the blockchain until the point of purchase. One thing that's really not clear to me, but I suspect is probably the case, is that once the artwork is purchased, then at that point you probably will then have to pay the associated network and gas fees required for creating the NFT on the blockchain. Now, when it comes to putting one of your physical canvas paintings on the NFT marketplace, it's still a little unclear to me how to go about doing this, but I do have some idea of some various ways to go about doing it. So one of the first things I discovered was something called a crypto anchor. This is something that's being pioneered by IBM, and you could potentially take some type of crypto anchor and lace it into your artwork, maybe into the frame, maybe into the canvas. You'd wanna do it in such a way that it's not removable without damaging the artwork or the anchor itself. Thus making the painting completely trackable throughout its entire lifespan. So you would see it going from owner to owner, and on top of that, it would give you the ability to get a percentage of any subsequent sale of your artwork after that. This is by far the most interesting thing to me about NFTs, simply because that's not something that's ever been possible before in the history of artwork. And it's one of those things that I feel has always taken advantage of artists in the past. So if I was to sell a painting early on in my career, where I'm at right now, if I was to sell one of my paintings for $100, and then sometime down the line, I blow up and become a huge artist, and that same painting gets sold for a million dollars, I don't get a cut of that. To me, that's pretty unfair. But NFTs are the solution to that problem. So now we as artists will be able to create residual streams of revenue off of our artwork alone. That's really one of the biggest things I'm focused on on this channel in way of learning how to make market and monetize art. One of my biggest entries is how to create streams of monetization that are recurring revenue month after month. I mean, who doesn't like to get a little bit of royalties, am I right? When it comes to talking about pairing NFTs with physical canvas art, I can't touch on this topic without mentioning Trevor Jones. This guy is incredible and he's a true pioneer in the art world and the convergence of technology with art. Not only does Trevor Jones use NFTs in his artwork, he also uses animations and augmented reality in such an effective way, it really has blown my mind. This is some guy that I really have to study and figure out how he's doing what he's doing. Right now, with what I know about the NFT art marketplace, I suspect the way he's doing it is that he's taking a picture of his painting and creating a digital rendering of that painting and attaching the NFT to the digital rendering, selling that alongside paired with the physical artwork. The more I look into this, the more I'm finding out there are a bunch of different ways to go about doing this. And honestly, I don't know enough yet to really elaborate on all of that just yet. That's certainly something we'll be covering in a future video as I document my process of my own journey, turning my canvas art into NFT art to be sold on the blockchain. So stay tuned for that. As I mentioned, when you create a non-fungible token and attach it to your artwork and you put it up on the NFT marketplace, you do have an option to ingrain a certain percentage of royalty value in your artwork. So you can set it anywhere from 5%. I've seen it all the way up to as high as 50%. So that way, if and when your painting does get sold later on down the line, possibly for a higher value, you still get a cut of that money, which is awesome. I don't know about you, but that really tickles my fancy. I don't know what that means. Okay, so the next part of this topic that we need to discuss is how exactly would you display NFT art? So let's say you're interested in buying a piece of NFT artwork 
but you're just wondering, why would I want to do that if I can't hang it on my wall and display it? Well, the truth of the matter is, you absolutely can hang it on your wall. So first off, not all NFT art has movable images in it or sound. Some NFT art is simply just static art. So if that is the type of piece you're interested in, you could always get that printed on a canvas and hang that on your wall in your home or your place of business, wherever you wanna show it off at. Now that said, one of the coolest things about NFT art is that Harry Potter-esque digital-like movement of the image. I just think it would be the coolest thing ever to come home and be greeted by my artwork. Maybe there's a character in the artwork that actually says hi to me. Really, your imagination is the limit. So then comes the question, how do you do that? There are, of course, digital frames that you could buy to display your artwork in. Alternatively, you could just go with a flat screen TV as well. So those are a couple options there. And I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below to some of the largest digital frames that are currently available on amazon.com. Beyond just digital frames though, we are literally right around the corner of a world of augmented reality. If you don't know what augmented reality is, it's basically virtual reality in the real world. So it's digital information laid over the real world. And pretty soon there's gonna be a number of different companies coming out with augmented reality glasses or maybe even augmented reality contact lenses that make this experience an everyday thing and it's gonna become as tied to us as our smartphones are. There will be a point in the not too distant future where we won't spend any time of our day not submerged in digital content and augmented reality. So when that becomes our daily reality, you'll easily be able to hang your NFT artwork anywhere you want, whether it's in your home or at work or maybe even some random public place. I don't know about that one, but, <laughs> but personally, I am super stoked. I've been waiting for augmented reality for years and NFTs are just the beginning of that digital forefront coming our way. Okay, so now we get to one of the most important parts of this video, and that's the question of, is NFT art a good investment? Now that said, I'm not a financial advisor, so I gotta do the regular disclaimers and all that. Please watch more than just this video, read more than just one article, really educate yourself before you decide to make or buy any NFT art at all, because there are some serious problems that we need to discuss. When it comes to the actual value of NFT art, it's certainly right now in, in a huge bubble. Whether or not it's gonna continue to grow in the enormous leaps and bounds that it has been in the last couple of weeks, that remains to be seen. But it's certainly blown up in popularity, which to me indicates it's most likely in a big bubble right now. So definitely proceed with caution. Now setting that question aside for a moment, there are some major things you should be aware of when it comes to buying or even selling your NFT art. And the first one on that list is where is the data stored? Many people might believe that that data is being stored on the blockchain, but this is totally unfeasible and not at all how it works. When you buy a piece of NFT art, the only thing that's being stored on the blockchain is the token that represents that art. The actual artwork is being stored on some other server or URL somewhere else. What happens when someone who's paid a large sum of money for a piece of artwork is no longer able to access that artwork? We are only at the beginning of this. It's basically the wild west and there's not really any laws governing this just yet. Considering that, I mean, there's some huge questions that need to be answered and likely a tidal wave of lawsuits coming down the pipeline. I mean, it just brings the question up, who ultimately is responsible for that data? So in the standard, regular, physical world, when you sell a piece of artwork and that artwork exchanges my hands to your hands, I'm not responsible for maintaining and preserving that artwork at that point. The owner of that artwork is then responsible for preserving that artwork and ensuring that it lasts well into the future. There's one major solution being proposed for this problem, and that is the interplanetary filing system. Calm down, space cadets. I love galaxies and space just like you, but this isn't quite what it sounds like. Basically, from my understanding, the interplanetary filing system is sort of like BitTorrent, where the data is stored across thousands of different devices. So that way, if one device were to go down, it's still accessible from all the other devices. There was one article I read that was proposing that when an artist sells an NFT, they create a three-year warranty or something like that, where they maintain the storage of that data for up to three years. And at the end of those three years, that data then gets transferred to the current owner of the artwork at that point in time. This seems superfluous and extra to the point where 
if you can do that three years from now, why not do it right now? If I sold you my artwork, I wouldn't be coming to your house and maintaining that piece of artwork for the next three years. You should get that ownership right away. I don't understand the three year warranty period. The interplanetary filing system is potentially a way to accomplish that transfer of ownership of the data. And then once you as the owner have that data, you're then responsible for storing it on your server or in some place where you're sure it's not gonna just suddenly become inaccessible to you. This particular feature of the NFT marketplace is not discussed by the NFT marketplaces. So this is one thing that certainly needs far more transparency so that both buyers and sellers are aware of this issue and know how to handle it accordingly. The next big issue with NFT art that we all should be aware of is copyright infringement. Now you might be wondering, well, isn't that the whole point of NFTs is to prevent copyright infringement? Yes and no, because the way the NFT marketplace is right now, if I wanted, I could go online, find some image that some other artist created, steal that image, copy it, upload it to the NFT marketplace, attach an NFT token to it, and it's possible that artist might never even know that I ever even did that, and nor would the marketplace. I believe there was one article I read that mentioned one potential solution to this problem is that all the NFT marketplaces start working together in such a way as that they would be able to identify any piece of artwork that's being uploaded by somebody who's not the actual creator of that artwork. They were talking about maybe using social media profiles to verify authenticity. Not entirely sure how this problem is going to be addressed, but it's certainly something you should be aware of as a buyer of any NFT artwork. And if you're some a-hole trying to sell somebody else's artwork, I've got a couple of things that I got to say to you. Now, in terms of copyright, there are some things that are automatically endowed with an NFT that are related to what's called the NFT license. There are a number of other uses that are endowed with the NFT license. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below so you can go over the full page. But the one in particular that I wanted to bring to your attention was the fact that a purchaser of your NFT artwork could potentially take that artwork and put it on products and sell those products perfectly legally, earning up to $100,000 without giving you any cut of that pretty substantial pie. Once they reach the $100,000 threshold, if they wanna continue selling those products, at that point, they then have to come back to you and negotiate a royalty fee or a licensing or some other terms and conditions that would allow you to retain a cut of your intellectual property. So this one piece of the NFT license to me is particularly, I, I don't think that's fair. I think we need to do something about that. I think that the percentage that you apply to the resale of your artwork should be included in something like that. So if somebody wants to do that, hey, by all means, go ahead and do that. Just give me a cut of my intellectual property. If you agree with that, do me a favor, hit that like button. Let me know that you're liking this content and that you wanna see more content on NFTs. That brings us to the last important topic of discussion, and that is energy usage and carbon emissions. I had to really do some research to try and find some details and get some specific numbers on the potential environmental impact a single piece of NFT artwork might have. One piece of NFT art can potentially cause 80 kilograms of carbon emission. For my American audience, that is 176 pounds of carbon emitted into the air for a single piece of NFT artwork. And that is just madness. One of the biggest frustrations with this is, first off, if that's not accurate, NFT marketplaces, this is for you, you need to be more transparent about your energy usage and carbon emissions. This stuff needs to be talked about. So if you're at all environmentally conscious or concerned about stuff like that, that's definitely a big, big warning sign to be aware before you buy or sell any NFT artwork. Now that said, I do discuss in much more detail in my article how I believe that the blockchain and NFTs are gonna play a huge role in helping alter our consumer-based mindset by creating crowdfunding and crowdsourcing platforms available that have never been possible before, making microtransactions and the earning of residual income off of everyday household investments totally possible. If you are as excited about NFTs as I am, and you found this video at all informative or enlightening, do me a favor, hit that like button. At this point in time, this is my first video on NFTs, so I don't have another NFT video for you to watch yet, but if you wanna learn a little bit about how I made any of the cool art behind me, check out this abstract painting playlist right here.